There. We fixed the shipping mistake. Uh, that tab's not coming off there. I put four metal staples in there, the bigger ones, and then melted plastic over top of all that from the tab off my old headlight. So I used the exact same plastic that came off of this. It's normally your best bet when you're plastic welding. Use either a piece of what you're using or if you have a broken one there that's made of the same plastic, use that. But yeah, it's good. Uh, like I said, with that tab in there, it lifts the headlight up. And that's what it needed. Now it fits like the other one does, and that's good. Before I go and remove this fender, we're going to be painting it off the car. Um, I went and took measurements of how far this fender was um, away from the... Uh, panel on the inside so that way this lip right here I, when I bend it out I can put the tape measure in there and see when I'm at the right spot another thing I'm going to try out is this machine that uh, Vivor sent me I honestly don't know if it works on aluminum so this might not work and if it doesn't I'll have to do another video on it working which will probably do it on the C10 uh, but uh, I'm going to attempt to use that to pull the, there's a slight dent behind that and with this machine, it allows me to, like, kind of tack to it and slide hammer it out without welding a stud to it and doing damage to the metal. This is, does minimal damage. It just kind of tacks to the outside enough that you can get a little bit of a slide hammer pull on it. So, I don't know, like I said, don't know that it works on aluminum. The, the contacts are made of, like, a copper. And, uh, yeah, we're going to attempt that. And also, I got to do one more review of the MK808TS. And we're going to get that out of the way right now. So if you haven't watched my last two videos, Altel sent me this uh, MK808TS. And uh, it's a Bluetooth code scanner. It does bi-directional controls. It does uh, like transmission programming. A bunch of different special features. Well, one thing we're going to do on this one is... Uh, this is a junkyard wheel. It came with a wheel sensor on it. I was going to swap the one off my old wheel, which is over there, but it the Schrader valve was all tore up on it, and that is part of the sensor on these, so it wasn't something that I could swap out. So I wish it was, but if you see the end of that, it got tore up, and uh, I did try to grind it down to save it, but there's no saving that. It's just tore up too much. Although this is a like cleaner sensor... I'm hoping I don't need the ID number off the back of it. <laughs> if I need the ID number off of that, I'm kind of screwed for reprogramming this thing. But we're going to try it anyways. Uh, <laughs> I hope it works. So the way some of these uh, tire pressure sensors work is you need a tool that sends a signal to the uh, sensor itself, which the car detects from that. This one's supposed to do multiple different cars. I have one that's strictly GM, and then I have this one. I know the GM one's not going to work, obviously, but we'll try this one. And in some cars, you don't even need that. You just need to get them in programming mode, and then sometimes you let, like, air out of them. All manufacturers are a little bit different. I'm going to look this up and see if I can do this without the ID code, uh, but we'll see what happens here. All right, so I'm seeing mixed ways to do this, but there's apparently a little wire down under the dash. You tap the ground and six times after you key it on. And then you go around and program them with that thing. But uh, we're going to see if we can do it with this instead. Because this is supposed to work on TPMS. So first you're going to take your dongle and find your OBD port. And I don't even remember where it's at on this. And plug it in. All right, you can see my, my hand lighting up green. That means we're plugged in. We're going to power on. Then we're going to power this on. Which I should have already had it on. But... Let me get a second to load this up and mess with this, and then I'll show you me reprogramming the sensors. Pizza, pizza. All right, so I've never even messed with this yet. This has a specialized TPMS thing on here. Um, let's find Nissan and uh, see how it works. Nissan. We're going to do the automatic VIN read. Okay. All right, so as you can see, shows the model, production date, 2009, uh, all this. Yes, that's what we're going with. <laughs> I can input the, the sensor ID. I don't have that right now. All right, so 
from what I did was diagnostics. It checked all four of them. Here they are. And I think it's not, it's not showing a code because I have the old wheel. Well, I have the old sensor sitting right over there. So let me get it and check the ID number on this. So as I thought, right here is the code. If I can get that to... to it's 7B9684. Right front. 7B9684. That's the same the same code so we need to redo that one i need to move that sensor away stay over there <laughs> all right so the other one i had that said it was for gm is the one that works so let me show you this now i just reprogrammed this it was simple as can be here we are on the relearn page as you can see right here is the sensor the passenger front i'm gonna hit trigger on here then we're going to take this tool and hold it right to the tire, push the button once. As you can see, come up green and registered the code. Now I'm going to do the same for the driver's front. Trigger. There it goes. So learn the driver's front. Let's go to the back. So passenger rear. I'm going to click on that. Hit trigger. There it is. Registered it. And now I'm going to go do the driver's back. Trigger. All learned. All right, so now that we went around and programmed them all, we're coming in to check, and we can check the pressures. I just made sure they were all the same or pretty close. So driver's front, let me trigger it. There. 34.3. I was trying to put like 34 in them all. I think I put a little bit too much in this passenger one. Let me trigger it. Thirty-five. Pretty close. Let's trigger the back one. Thirty-four point eight. So I'm a little high, but we're close. This thing right here is the sensor for this. It's it's in the top of this, so that's why you have to put it down there. 35. They're all programmed. I just wanted to show you guys that, and if you guys want to get your hands on the MK808TS, there's a link down in the description. There's a sale going on right now. I believe there's a couple days left. And you're going to get this for over $100 off. Um, just head to the Amazon link below and get yourself one of these things. All right, so I just had to do some light bulb changing so that this light will work. It's working now. I should check the turn signals. But this one, you can see that's visibly clearer. And this one is hazy, and I'm not sure how that's going to come up on camera. There, you can see the swirls and scratches. So I'm going to do a restore on this one so that it ends up like this one, as you can see, clear. So these are the cheap kits I've been getting online right here, this uh, Cerakote, and I like them so far. I mean, look at, you, you could visibly see that that's nicer, and that one came in really crap condition. So... This one should look really good when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now.
Now tell me that thing doesn't look brand new again. I mean, it looks awesome. I even, because I, I touched this one a little early, and you're not supposed to put two coats of that stuff on, okay? That clear at the end. Uh, but I tried to put this light in too early without giving it time to dry. Like, I gave it like a half an hour. I guess you're supposed to give it a couple hours anyways. And I kind of messed it up a little bit. So I went over it with that one that I just had, and it cleared that up too. There was like a, a spot up here, and it's it's gone now. So, yeah. So I'm going to let this thing sit. I'm actually going to put it over on my uh, tire machine just to tuck it off to the side. But I need to get the center console out so I can get the side pieces off so I can get the center piece out so I can get to the crash module. That, and I got a side curtain airbag. So, uh, crash module kind of, that and the seat belts need to come out now because I'm behind. I'm, I'm, I wanted to have this thing done next weekend, and now realistically it's going to be two weekends because I haven't even started the body work yet, so that's probably going to be next weekend, then getting it ready for painting, and I'll probably paint it the following week. So, just being realistic here, uh, I don't really have dates or, or timelines or whatever, but I kind of want it done. All right, so I went and ate, you know, two hours later maybe. Look at that. That thing looks brand new. That's awesome. So now it matches this one, which sort of looks brand new, except for the little chip down in the corner here. That's really not that bad. We can live with it. Crash module. So the crash module in this thing is right here. And to get this off, this needs to come off. For this to come off, you need to take that and the side pieces off. And then also the seat belts, I have them unbuckled here. But there's a spot up here that needs to come off. And then the seat belts itself are down, I think I think they're actually like right here by the speaker kind of. Mine didn't have speakers, if you remember I added them. But these panels are a little bit of a pain to get off. You have to take these caps off. So I'm going to have to go get some spanners and stuff, but this whole panel, there's a bolt in the back of them, back here on each corner, uh, needs to come out before this panel can come loose. But then you have to take this loose to pop these up, which are pretty tight in there. And uh, also this back panel, I believe, has to come off as well. And I believe underneath these there's a pad in here you gotta get lifted up they're just velcroed in have you ever walked a high pass watched the northern lights flash took a photograph on a paris street have you ever climbed a tall tree asked someone for mercy Gave something away that wasn't free. I don't wanna get a vision of you stuck in my head Because I know that you were meant to be wilder Another night of television while you're lying in bed It's slowly gonna be the death of you Have you ever really lived? You talk a big game, but it's just a matter of time Have you ever really lived? We're all on the clock here oh, 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 oh. So, this, the wiring is a pain in the butt to get off, and this doesn't actually have to come the whole way out. It just needed to lift up so that I could get that piece out. These are a pain in the butt. I know I had problems with mine fitting, and I, I just, there's a pin or something down in here that holds this, and I'm just having one heck of a time. It doesn't want to come out, so you can work around them. <laughs> I can still get to the seat belts, as you can see, and, uh, the crash module got this piece out which it flips up pretty easy and get it out uh right here's a fuel tank on these it's over there and right here is your fuel tank and uh but there's a crash module i still have the battery hooked up so i am going to disconnect the battery to take that out but i got this back piece loose and without these side pieces off this is really hard to get out but i can get down in through the top of this and uh i don't know if you can see it right there 
or you can see the bolts. There's one bolt in the front and two in the back and to get the crash module out. And we're gonna take the seat belts out right now. And then uh, I'm gonna send those out. And while we're in here at this point, once I get these off, um, I'm gonna get these top window trims unclipped. And we're gonna, or at least this side, we're gonna get this side of the top window trim uh, out and then pull the headliner down. Um, I still have to take a couple bolts out of, uh, right there out of the let me just do it right now the sun visor oh, oh how about we loosen it how about i round it this is hard to do holding a camera so i probably shouldn't have did that why am i why am i recording this I don't understand. Now we honestly have one more thing to do in this video, but I'm not going to do it tonight because it's starting to get a little late. I have to work tomorrow, so uh, I'm going to get it during the week. I'll probably get it tomorrow when I get home from work. Uh, we're going to pull this headliner down. I already said we're going to pull the headliner down. The way these side curtain airbags are, they have a bunch of 10 millimeters. There's like one up here, which I already pulled this inner window trim off. There's like one up here. There's like anchors. Okay. Okay. You can see them here. One there, one there, and they're just flimsy tabs. One there, so there's three of them running down the side of the car. Two more back by the window, and then this comes up, and uh, the canister is actually right here along the ceiling line. So, comes up here and then goes over in the canister from here to here underneath the headliner and there's a couple bolts in that and a plug and uh then we can replace this one but anyways i'll update you i'm gonna package this stuff up go on ebay safety restore do a crash module and single stage seat belts two of them and i'll let you know how much that's going to be plus then go to ups stores uh measure your package do the yeah go to the ups store and then measure your package <laughs> then weigh it probably not even an ounce uh and then <laughs> package these up and ship them out ups if you do it on the website it seems to be cheaper to me uh, um i go ahead and schedule the package and then i just drop it off at uh the ups drop off location which is a hardware store downtown they take it whatever you paid for them that's going to pay to ship them back so you don't even have to worry about that so i'm hoping they're not behind like they were the last time so I can get these back like by next weekend so we can throw them in. But um, we got body work and other things to do. So regardless, when we get them, they're going to get in there. The seatbelt cost me $78. Crash module cost me $38. And then I'm going to ship them to Safety Restore, which is the same location for both of them. So I'm just going to 
set up a shipment. I'm going to throw these inside of the package and I got to weigh this and everything and I'll see how much shipping is. $20.30 to ship that and that's with $500 in coverage. So, or no, $20.40 with $500. So if they lose my package or it gets damaged or something, I have $500 insurance. That will surely buy me seat belts and a crash module. I don't know. Maybe it won't. I just thought it sounded good. All right, last but not least here, we need to get this side curtain airbag out. Been saying it the whole episode. We're finally here, boys. I already popped this panel. You just got to get in behind it and pop it down out. That's enough that I should be able to break this headliner loose. I don't want to wrinkle it too much. I already tried to uh, pop it down over here, which it's loose up front, as you can see. But you have to get this side panel pulled out here so that you can get up and on this. I remember right I don't want to break anything or, or wrinkle the headliner so I'm carefuling <laughs> but uh, a plastic trim tool would probably be good here to get inside of here to pull down on this is there's pins that hold it the closer you can get to the pin to pop it down out the better so I'm gonna mess with this a little bit here see if I can get this pop down all right, I switched over cameras because of this one having the light on it. We're going to get this out. I got this down enough now that you can see right there is the canister. Look how long it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the last one, it pretty much like really destroyed this headliner piece. And uh, what i got to do is hot glue that in. Here's another piece of it. It's going to go right here. So I'm going to hot glue all that back in that I can. And then one mount on the back came loose right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip that up in the roof. And uh, right before we put it back in, I will hot glue the headliner there and then push it up in. And we'll hold it until she stays. Well, actually, there's two more clips there to hold it, so it should be fine. Let me set up the camera and uh, I'll get to working on this. Not too bad. Like I said, 10, 10, uh, I think they're both 10s, yeah, and then back here in the back, this camera works awesome as a work light, two 10s back there, and then the plug, which we might have to fiddle with back here from the back, oh, can we see it back here, yeah, we can get to it from back here, can't really see it, but, oh, she's toy, like a tiger. All right, so now I already have the hot glue gun heated up. I got glue falling out of it. I'm gonna glue these back up here where they're supposed to go. Then every place that it kind of tore or separated, I'm gonna add some cardboard in there to help stiffen that up. And get these little chunks out of here that are still left. That's what I did on the last one. I had a whole bunch of like these little shipping cardboard things. This time I just have some some thin cardboard. You could use a cereal box or something like that. I'm just gonna hot glue it in them areas across that crack. Just not like patch it completely, but I'm just gonna put little pieces in there just to, you know, completely make that a little bit more solid so it doesn't wrinkle. Oh, let me get the light on. See how it kind of wrinkled right there and there's wrinkles up here. It's gonna save, it's gonna make all that kind of go away. So now, Hot glue time.
We got her in. Oh, I, the only thing I gotta do is I gotta put the uh, sun visor back up in, which will lift this up. But right now it's got a little wrinkle right here, but once you put that in, you notice how that goes away. What I should have did, I didn't even think about it. I have a, a backup camera for this thing. It's a rear view mirror. It looks kind of funky on there, but I mean, as opposed to putting a whole stereo in to get a backup camera, uh, we're gonna be fine, but I gotta do a review on that. So that's gonna be on a different episode. Every time I sit down in here, my, my um, impact wrench was in here. And I kept sitting on it. It was vibrating my butt cheeks. I was like, what is going on? Yeah, boys, that's not too hateful. I'm okay with that. Yeah, you might see a couple little wrinkles here and there, but it's still, honestly, it's, that's what you got to complain about with an R title. It, that's fine. Complain about it. I don't care. So I'm not going to have the crash module or the seat belts to put back in. Uh, they're, they're shipped out. This is like uh, five days later from the last clips I was doing um to when i did the side curtains or side curtain um yes it'd probably be a lot easier to rip the whole thing down but i really didn't feel like uh taking that off over there and then unclipping it and breaking more clips if you can keep it on there without nissan's not good with their clips if you can leave some clips on there leave them on there because you're gonna have a better time with it staying yeah why why did I not put that backup camera in? Oh. Headliner's gonna come back down. <laughs> Next video, we gotta tackle this bodywork. It doesn't look like there's a lot, but the door, the side skirt, and the bumper have slight damages to them, so we do have to fix those up. But that's for the next video. I Have I ever told you I don't like to do bodywork? You just learn to deal with it. That's kind of like how it is, I, I feel. I, I'm just like, I need to do this, and I just sit down and I take my time, and it normally turns out pretty good. At least I think so. So if you like this video, smash that like button, consider subscribing, hit that dislike button if your mom has all the impact codes in her crash module, drop me a comment, and we'll see you on the next episode on Wrecked. scaring them. Oh, what's new? oh no, he's dead. Oh, high five. Oh, let's stretch it out. What are you doing? Sitting on the chair. You want some pads? Yeah, you do. Do you want to say bye-bye? I don't like that light. Huh? What's mommy doing? What's mommy doing? Oh. <laughs> I have granny panties on. No one wants to see that. Well, it's just how I like them. <laughs>